Hello, my name is Alex, and in the, ne the next presentation we're going to uh, talk a bit about uh, control values. Now, uh, normally the possible values for elements and attributes are statically known, they come from the schema, but there are some situations when uh, these values are a little more dynamic, um, and uh, they come from external data sources like, uh, let's say, a file or maybe a, a database. Uh, in this situation, Oxygen will not offer um, um, such a good support uh, for validation or content completion, uh, but uh, you can um, easily configure it um, to get this support. Um, where for, va for validation, you could use a Schematron like George presented um, earlier today. And uh, I'm here to offer you a, a, a couple of solutions uh, for the content completion part. Okay, so the first solution involves form controls and XPath. Um, I ha um, so for this, uh, my scenario is uh, pretty simple. I have an XML, uh, a form-oriented XML. I have a form and a country and a city element. And the possible values for the city um, element depend on, on, uh, on the value that I have already set for the country. So if I'm choosing, uh, and, and this, uh, this dependency, it's uh, encoded in an external XML file that has um, this, uh, this structure. So I have a country and then uh, the, the available cities. So like I said, I've um, solved this problem by using form controls and, uh, and XPath. Um, so, uh, as you, in case you, you don't know, for the author mode, you can add form controls uh, to edit attribute values and uh, uh, text uh, uh, of, or value of, of uh, an element. And there are a lot of form controls like combo boxes and text fields and checkbox and so on. Uh, I'll be using two combo boxes. So this is the country. And so I'm going to select the country. And afterwards, for the city, I'm being presented with uh, the, the cities from Romania. Uh, if I change the country to France, um, the cities will, will be those from France. So this is how it works. Let's uh, see how I did it. I'm going to open this, um, the CSS. OK, so you add form controls from the CSS. And uh, on a CSS rule, on the content property, you use these uh, 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 extension functions that Oxygen has. So I, I'll use the Oxy combo box to add the combo box. And for the possible values, I'm using the Oxy XPath um, extension function to execute an, ex uh, an XPath expression on my configuration file. Um, now for the city, it's a, a little bit more interesting. Uh, OK, so the values, the possible values for the city. Uh, the trick here is to use the OxyXPath function and the OxyReplace function together. Let me maximize a bit. So I have an XPath expression that I want to execute, but this uh, country variable, uh, this is the actual, the actual country set in the document. So I'm going to use OxyReplace to replace the country with uh, the actual uh, value from the document and the resulting uh, expat expression I'm going to execute it uh, again to get uh, the cities for uh, for that country so that's how you do it with form controls and expat um, the main advantage for uh, using this approach is that it's very easy to uh, implement you just uh, write a bit uh, uh, of CSS, a bit of uh, expat, and uh, that's it. Um, there are a couple, um, there are two disadvantages though that you should consider. Uh, the first one would be that this content completion support will only be available in the form controls. So uh, if it, will, it won't be available in the text page, if you're using the text page or in the attributes view. But if um, 
you have a more <coughs> uh, document-centric uh, uh, user interface, then it might be enough. Um, and the second uh, possible disadvantage is that in case you have, let's say, a very big uh, file that you need to run expat expression on, um, you might get a performance bottleneck. Well, that depends. Uh, we, we try to make some um, uh, caching and such, but um, it, it, it uh, goes best with uh, quick uh, expat uh, expressions. And to to overcome this, uh, these two uh, little problems, uh, there's the second approach, and that in involves uh, using a schema ma manager filter. Now, the schema manager filter is part of our public J Java based API, and normally, if you want to create such an implementation, you would extend this class over here, and basically, through such a class, you can con contribute to the content completion in Oxygen. And because uh, most people are more familiar with writing uh, expat and style sheets uh, instead of writing Java, then I, I've uh, created a uh, schema manager uh, filter implementation uh, that works something like this. So it, it reads an XML configuration file. And in this configuration file, you can uh, give values for attributes or elements. And you can give them uh, either explicitly uh, uh, by this kind of uh, XML fragments, or you can choose to execute an XSL uh, transformation. And this XSL transformation can connect to an external data source, for example, an exist XML uh, database through REST, and uh, maybe process, uh, post-process a bit the data it, re it receives from the exist uh, server. And afterwards, um, it has to return um, the same format with, uh, with items. And uh, these values will be contributed on, uh, on content completion. And, uh, right, and for example, I have two use cases when, uh, in which uh, this kind of schema manager filter uh, can be useful. And it's a TI document. And first, there's an attribute here, a who attribute. Uh, a who attribute, yes, for, for a speaker. So this is from uh, the drama uh, module of TI, if you are familiar with. Uh, okay, let's. Okay, so <coughs> a drama mo mo module has a cast list. These are the uh, persons involved in the in the play, and afterward you have speakers. E what each speaker uh, says, and uh, this who attribute is uh, uh, is declared in the in the TI schema as an ID ref, and a as a result, Oxygen will present here on content completion um, all the ID ref, all, all the IDs declared in the document, right? But using this uh, implementation that I've present, I presented, I can just restrict uh, the possible values for the speaker to Bernardo and Francisco, uh, the ones from the, from the cost list. Um, so for this example, I, I'm, uh, I'm executing an XSLT that uh, gets some information from the current document itself. And the second use case is uh, one in which I get the values from an exist database. And again, uh, this is the writing module, and I have a writing element. And uh, again, uh, here is the who attribute. And um, the, uh, the possible writers this time come from an exist database. So if I invoke content completion here, it's going to connect to an mm. exist database that I've installed. And uh, 
you have to believe me, these uh, possible values come from, from my exist uh, uh, server. And next time you need to authenticate again? No, no. Uh, it, it, I, I don't have to authenticate, uh, authenticate again. <laughs> um, so the credentials will be uh, stored for this session. And also, uh, when I execute the XSLT that gets the values, I can either say that you should cache the values or you have to interrogate the server each time. So that might also help with uh, performance. So if the values are dynamic, they will be requested each time from the server. Or Right, and uh, if we have a minute, I can also show you uh, the configuration. So this is the configuration file. So it's, it's something like this for an LG element. Um, I can give values uh, directly. For the who attribute, well, I probably look here. For the who attribute on the writing element, I'm executing an, expa an uh, XSLT. I say that uh, it shouldn't be cache. This uh, XSLT should, must be executed each time that I want to um, that the uh, content completion is requested, and for the SP element, for the who attribute on the SP element, um, again I'm executing XSLT. Um, well, and, and the actual XSLT. It's something like this. It ha uh, is, there's a predefined uh, name for the start template. And here I connect to, through REST to, to an exist database. And uh, with the information that I'm receiving, I'm just uh, processing it a bit to, to get the output that uh, this content completion filter needs. OK, thank you. If you have any questions. So, so this kind of configuration works for any document type. You just need to drop the configuration file in the class path. Mm. Well, the now we we didn't have the time to um, integrate it in uh, directly into Oxygen. We intend to oh. future versions. For future versions, um, this uh, this support will be built in. But uh, for now, if you want something like this, uh, we can just uh, uh, give you the implementation, it's a jar file, yes? Yes. Is there, is there a limitation on the implementation? No. Uh, what then, uh, we use Saxon? Uh, well, we use Nine, Saxon. Uh, Enterprise Edition, I think. Yes. OK. OK, so Thank you. enjoy the break. Thank you so much for your time till now.